Good evening. Hello again. Welcome to another Mermaid Live. I hooked myself another one. Another mer victim. <laughs> so my special guest tonight is going to be Siren Meru. And I met Siren Meru through TikTok. Um, I've seen his content and he's come into my Mermaid Lives a couple of times and interacted with me. And so um, I fell in love with one of his videos because he was doing a, a downward upside down um torpedo in a mermaid tail which is when you're like on your head and you're twisting like this and i was like oh my god that's crazy hello hi hi jojo welcome welcome to mermaid tiktok you found us i am going to be going live with another mer tonight so if that's something you're interested in you can stick around and listen to us chit chat to each other <laughs> There you are! Hello! I'm turning you up hey. so, I, so I can hear your awesomeness. Can Hello, me, Siren! Right? I can! Hello, Siren Meru! How are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing very well. It is such an honor to meet you, my friend. It is just an honor. I fell in love with um, your TikTok account. And I just knew. I just knew in my little mermaid heart. I'm like, I need, I need to meet this person. I need to meet this mer immediately and so thank you so much for agreeing to speak to my crazy self because um a lot of mermaids say yes and then they don't quite know what they've gotten themselves into so <laughs> i'm so excited to meet you look at how fantastic well, you look oh i'm gonna i'm gonna get into your thank look you. in just a second because this is a whole mood i'm loving it so much but there's lots of people in here on my side that don't know who you are and so can we start off, Siren Meru, by you introducing yourself and introducing the inspiration for your name? That's very unique, right? Meru is a very unique name, and I want to know where it comes from. So go ahead. Absolutely. So um, Meru is actually sort of a tongue-in-cheek sort of name um, because in Hindu cosmology, which is, um, I practice Hinduism, um, but in Hindu cosmology, Meru is actually the center of the universe, uh, Mount Meru, actually. It's the axis upon which all of the universes spin. Um, and because Meru is my hyper-confident alter ego, I thought it would be a cute uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek sort of name to name him after the center of the universe. <laughs> and why, um, why a siren and not... Uh, another part of the merfolk family. What drew you into the siren part? Um, I'm not really sure, actually. So, like, I considered calling myself a merman. It felt kind of weird. I just kind of went with siren because it was a little bit more, like, gender neutral, actually. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I kind of, like, leaned into the siren aesthetic at the same time. Um, I, I enjoy, uh, you know, the kind of more dark aspects of of that character as well so it, it seemed to work out and and you're in your videos you're a very you seem to be a very very powerful swimmer do you have a swimming background or training in such so i'm actually a swim instructor i've been a swim instructor for about five years now um and i started as a swim instructor i've only actually been mermaiding for about i want to say it's a few months now like i've started in like march or something like that um but I w i've been a swim instructor for five years and um that's really kind of where i got my passion for swimming um it's where i obtained all of my skills um and interestingly enough i actually didn't start uh learning my strokes until i was 19 years old i could i was very comfortable in the water but i did not know how to do freestyle i did not know how to do any of the strokes until 19 years old when i started my swim instruction job Oh, okay. So, you know, um, some people, I've heard this from a few different people, like even with dancing, like hip hop and things, not so much with ballet, but with something like hip hop, I've heard that people can be older when they get into um, sort of the um, instructor side of the sport or like a little bit more professional with it. And, um, you know, some of the biggest uh I'm, I'm still sticking with my dance analogy, but some of the biggest hip hop dancers in the world started when they were like, you know, 14, 15 years old. 
So in regards to swimming being a sport for everybody, you know, you can really start at any time, right? Right. Yeah, definitely. You don't, you don't have to and, start and, at and three. And adults too. So like, uh, you know, I get people in my swim class that are like in their 60s and they learn how to swim. And that's amazing to me because, uh, you know, a, a lot of these people come to me and they think that they can't learn how to swim because they've reached adulthood without ever really getting into the water. So, um, yeah, swimming is absolutely something that you can learn at any age, and it's something that you can fall in love with, you know, no matter where you are in your life. Oh, that's so wonderful to hear. And I, and I, we always encourage people to, you know, um, pick up something new or something challenging or even something that is good for physical fitness or, men, or, or mental relaxation, which, as you and I both know, is our swimming right? We, we've both sort of decided that swimming is our thing. And I kind of like to ram it down other people's throat. <laughs> like, you need to swim. <laughs> Please go. You don't need to put on a mermaid tail, but you need to swim. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's how I am too. Um, I think swimming is good for so many different things. Um, you know, after I got into swim instruction, I got into rehabilitative aquatics as well. And so there's, there's a lot of crossover and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that water can do for our bodies that just is so incredible and so healing. And, and I love it. Rehabilitative aquatics. Can you touch on that a little bit? What does that mean? So um, I'm still studying it. I'm not certified in rehabilitative aquatics just yet. Um, but rehabilitative aquatics is basically um, kind of taking into consideration a person's physical limitations. And find, like it usually you work with a physical therapist as well, but you're basically using the water to help people, you know, relieve their pain or regain some amount of mobility. Um, and I, I think it's really fascinating because I, I consider myself to be a disabled person and I am much more comfortable in the water than I am on land. Um, and I want to give that gift to other people. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm going into rehabilitative products and why I'm uh, studying it and trying to spread the word to others. <laughs> Because I've, I've seen, um, you know, in extreme cases, right, I was unfamiliar with the name of it, so it's actually good that you told me rehabilitative aquatics, um, of people who've been in car accidents and how they, how they can clamp up like this and their body kind of freezes in this position as a, as a defense, where in swimming you kind of can bring the body out in the, like even just the simple breaststroke, right, and just retrain the brain and the muscles to accept this movement and it can get rid of that um, clenched sort of fetal position that these people can. And again, that's in extreme cases. That's not, that doesn't happen to everybody. Thank goodness, but it does happen. And um, like you said, using water uh, can be incredibly gentle on the joints and the bones. And if you're healing from something or if you have difficulty with mobility, because one of our mermaids, one of our biggest mermaids in our country, uh, mermaid Reina, who runs Halifax Mermaids has some incredible difficulties with chronic pain in her legs and um, in her abdomen. And she's one of the like greatest Canadian mermaids of all time. Right. And, and so um, she's a big advocate for uh, swimming as a way of healing. And I'm thankful that I met another one because um, most of most of the MERS that I've spoken to, you know, swimming is kind of our hobby. Some of them it's a job, but I've met another person who's using water for healing. And so oh, no. I just uh, feel like I'm connected to you. Just really Can you hear me, darling? Yes. Awesome. Oh, thank God. Okay. Uh, do you know, I had to write the word restart backwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hang on, hang on, wait, wait, all right. I feel so bad. Well, I was tell I was telling you before we so were so rudely interrupted by sound difficulties, is I was telling you that like I have this, I feel like I have this connection with you because you and I both have uh found connected to water for healing purposes. Oh, definitely. Awesome. Um, can I ask uh what you feel is healing about the water? What what does it help you with? Ooh. Um, well, through, well, uh, a basic function is through my neurodiverseness is it's my stem. So, uh, whenever I have, uh, either like a tough time with, um, sensory, or if I'm having a tough time with emotional 
processing. I feel like if I put my hand into, uh, it has to be like a certain temperature. I'm kind of picky. It has to be a certain temperature and it has to be running water. It kind of feels like it's being pulled out of my hand and into the water, if that makes any sense whatsoever to people. Um, so it's, it's an, right. It's like an emotional stem for me and also physically through countless surgeries and so many doctor's appointments and multiple diagnoses and whatever, and just a really bad start in health in my early years, water was just a physical healing thing for me. I'm doing much better now, but like it was a, it was a bit of a rough go for a while. It was a bit of a rough go. Um, but water was very, um, I just, I feel at home. Like when I'm holding my breath and I'm underwater, I feel like I could stay there forever. I don't, I don't know why, but I just, I, I don't hear very much and the, the water is calming and, uh, it's like a reset on my, on my system. Bang. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that makes perfect sense to me as well. Um, I'm actually neurodivergent as well. Um, I happen to teach a lot of neurodivergent children. Um, and when they're submerged in the water, you can tell it's just their happy space that like, uh, you know, they can't hear as much going on. There's not as much sensory stimulation going on. So people that are prone to getting very, very over overstimulated um, will just be so at peace in the water. And it's amazing to watch. Oh, that's so good. See, like, I even have like my brother who's neurotypical. Um, I turned him on to cold water through like muscle therapy and cold water sculpting because he was a professional athlete most of his life. And now he's got like bad knees and bad back. He's also like six, eight and a half. So like he um, struggles with, uh, he had a very big growth spurt. And so he just struggles with that. And I'm like, have you ever been to cold water? And he's like, no, I'm like, go get yourself into cold water. And so now he like bought himself, um, one of those round troughs that like you feed cows in and he like puts ice water in that and just sits in that. I'm like, it feels nice, doesn't it? And he's like, yeah, that feels pretty good. <laughs> I'm like, just sit there. It's fine. We don't judge you. It's fine. Just sit there. You're good. Yeah. That's awesome. Sorry. That's great. Pardon me. So, so tell me about the look you have on this evening and why you chose the particular pieces that you have chosen. Um, so I was feeling kind of tropical today, so I'm, a, mm -hmm. I'm, I have a little bit lighter of a look on than I normally do. Um, a lot of times I really, really like black and just darker colors in general. Um, but you know, sometimes I'm feeling light and happy and cheerful and tropical. So I have my little flower in my hair. Um, this sash is actually a macrame thing that I made, um, it was originally a belt, so I need to change the closure out in the back. But it looks great from the front right now, so I totally wore does. it. Uh, it has these really cool glow-in-the-dark beads that you probably can't tell that they're glow-in-the-dark at the moment, but uh, they're fun. Um, and then this is just a little crescent moon necklace that I made. It's actually a failed resin pour that I salvaged by cutting with scissors because it was so floppy that I realized I could cut it with scissors and I turned it into a crescent moon and turned it into a necklace to make sure that I didn't waste it. Um, and yeah, so that's, uh, there are some seed beads that I bought that I just put on a string for now until I can figure out what to do with them. And they all kind of match with a color scheme. So I just kind of threw it together. Yeah. So where is, because you say that, yeah, and I've seen some of your videos and I adore that gothic sort of tail when you were talking about the the swimming um competitive swimming incident oh the aesthetic i was like yes please i think we need a tiktok series of gothic tales in tales by siren meru first of all number one because i would live for all of that i'd be like oh yes and tell me tell me this like do you have a persona or do you have like a backstory of like who Siren Meru is, like how old they are, where they're from in the world, whether or not they're like tropical or cold water. Like, do you have all that yet? Um, so I'm still developing it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few things that I know about Siren Meru right now. Um, like I said a little bit earlier, he is my hyper confident alter ego. So he doesn't concern himself very much with the opinions of humans. Um, 
he is he he very much likes showing off he likes beautiful things shiny things um and i kind of just went from there with it um a lot of the character that i have with meru is is just kind of creating the person that i would like to see myself life um and kind of just putting on that persona for a little bit and playing around with it and and uh yeah so i'm still experimenting with the character but um for the most part he's just a very hyper confident uh very show offish uh happy person um i so you were talking about how uh siren meru is sort of a confident sort of um uh personality that you can put on or take off do you feel that you do that when you don your tail like is your tail the personality or is just the overall aesthetic of the siren do you know what i mean i think it's a little bit of both um definitely when i see myself in the water um i think differently about myself uh there's mm. something about me swimming and like watching footage of me swimming that like flips a switch in my head and uh, the first time that I got my GoPro, I kind of reviewed a lot of my footage and was like, oh my goodness, I don't think I can hate my body anymore because look at what it can do. So there's something really, really cool about putting on the tail and, um, you know, swimming and watching myself swim. Um, there's also something very interesting about just the aesthetic of the character. Um, I mean, for me, I was, I was a theater kid, so like... Uh, I kind of understand how you can be a very shy individual, but as soon as you put on a character, it's it's very uh, different. Like you're kind of distancing yourself from that person in a way that um, makes it so that you can put, portray them more authentically. It kind of adds a little bit of balance to your life too. If you're either a shy person or an introvert and you're able to put on a, per a personality or a persona that's a little bit outgoing, it kind of balances you and centers you, right? Because I am not centered whatsoever i am an extreme extrovert and it's it, it can be like emotionally exhausting to be that way all the time right so i i understand i wish i could put on a persona that was quiet i don't <laughs> i don't i don't think that's ever gonna happen and i just wanted to say mermaid nymphia is in here hello mermaid nymphia and uh Hi. my sister-in-law mermaid noel is in here mermaid nymphia if you want to talk about a mermaid that has an incredible persona story that's Mermaid Nymphia. She has created a, just an incredible character that has gone, like, the story has gone global, you know? And, and they've created, like, illustrations for it and TikTok videos and just, oh, that's, it's a goal. Mermaid Nymphia's story is a goal. Thank you, Mermaid Nymphia, for making me feel inferior. I feel great. Thank you. <laughs> no, I love her. She's, she's like, she's my favorite. Um, so tell me a little bit more about, cause I, I wanted to talk about this TikTok video of yours that I fell in love with, which was your upside down torpedo where you're twisting. Okay. How in sweet heaven, how, how, Siren Meru, how, how are you doing this? Because I can't even, I like what? Explain that witchcraft to me, please, because it is incredible. It's incredible. So... I am a completely self-taught mermaid, um, completely self-taught. I have not taken any classes for it. Um, and that video was basically me experimenting, trying to see if I could do that torpedo without my arms. Um, and I could, and it's basically like this gyroscopic thing that's happening with my abdominal muscles and I'm kind of like spinning around with my abs. Um, and that was my first take. I, I did not practice that at all. It was just kind of an experiment to see if I could do it. Um, and it turned out really cool. Um, I think that there are some things that I would possibly change about it. Like I think that my arms could be a little bit more graceful. Um, but I mean, they're, it's just a tiny like critique that I have of that first take that I got of, of that torpedo. Yeah. Because it looked, it Turn looked it very, it, it looked very synchronized swimming like, like with, even with your arms, the way that they were, it looked like a synchronized swimming move to me that I've seen other people do, like other professionals. 
So I, I do take a lot of my inspiration from synchronized swimming. Um, I don't have any formal training in synchronized swimming. All, all of my training is in just regular competitive swimming strokes. Um, but I watch synchronized swimming and I watch other mermaids doing their thing. And I kind of just test out to see what I am capable of. Um, and that was kind of just the product of that. Oh, I loved every second of it. Other, other people are in my chat going, what? An upside down torpedo? I need to see this. This sounds epic. Oh my God. Yeah. So I get, I get proud of myself. Here's where I am. I get proud of myself when I can do a, uh, horizontal torpedo twice. If I can do that twice in a row, I'm like, oh, who's a bad fish? Me. <laughs> then, then in comes, uh, Siren Meru and just like, you know, on his head, like, just like, whatever. I'm like, okay, listen, like, you're making the rest of us look bad. Like, you need to, you need to, like, either teach me or, like, calm down because I am so excited to learn how to do this. So, like, one day you're going to have to, like, get on, like, you and I are going to have to get on a video chat while I'm in a pool and be like, okay, what, how do I do? How do I do this? <laughs> Talk me through it. It is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh, so thank you. I appreciate that. Tell me a little bit what, um, you know, your human side does when you're not mermaiding? What do you do? Do you, do you uh, work somewhere? Are you a student? Like, what do you do if you're comfortable sharing? Yeah, so um, I'm a swim instructor most of the time. That is my occupation at the moment. Um, I teach kids how to swim um, and I love it. It is my favorite job that I've ever had. Um, you know, and, and I'm working in drowning prevention. So it's, it's a thing that I feel fulfilled doing. Um, and it's incredible. Um, that's how I spend most of my time. I do have some hobbies. I like play video games. I craft things, but uh, I'm kind of all over the place when it comes to my hobbies. I'm very, uh, I don't finish a lot of projects, unfortunately. <laughs> you mean you're a typical neurodivergent person? Like the yes, rest of us yeah. where we're like, I'm going to, I'm going to Tony Stark this and I'm going to learn how to crochet in one night and I'm going to buy all the materials to crochet and then I'm never going to touch it again. That's me. That's not right. <laughs> That's me. My poor husband. Oh my God. I'm like, honey, I, you should have, you should have heard me last year during the pandemic. Oh my God. I was like, babe, look, I saw this video and I can turn glass jars into glass beads. And all I need is like a furnace and, and like rods and I could like heat it up. And he's like, what are you, what are you talking about? You're not going to glass blow in the garage. And I'm like, but I can, I can turn glass beads. Like, look. And he's like, no, <laughs> no, you're not. I'm not letting you buy a $2,000 furnace. You're going to burn our house down. <laughs> and I was so mad at him. I'm like, you don't appreciate me. I was so mad. I threw like a temper tantrum. Oh, thank God he didn't let me do that because that would have been a mistake. But no, I completely understand um, what you say. Now, what? Now I heard the word video games. So you have to tell me what you're currently playing or what you recently played. Um, so I'm playing Pokemon Snap with my partner. Um, oh, he also recently got me into Magic the Gathering, so I am oh no, a bit of you that, poor thing, a little bit begrudgingly, um, but you know it's mostly with him, so it, it's how we spend quality time. Is we play Magic the Gathering and we play some Pokemon Snap, um, but uh, gosh, what's the name of the Switch game that I recently got? I think it's anzu or something similar to that i got a cool free diving game that's like this oh abzu 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 yes abzu, abzu. i know it's that so one babe fun. it's so beautiful yeah um so i've been playing that on my own um i don't play a ton of video games just by myself but that's the one that i'm playing on my own right now because i remember so my husband went to university for video game creation and when he was in university, oh my God, how many years ago now? Uh, 13 years, I don't know, I'm dating myself. Uh, anyway, so when he was in university, this game came out called Journey. And it was just like super relaxing. It was for the PS whatever at the time. Now I have it on PS4 now, but it was like this super relaxing little, like you're like this little sand, like this person um, that's going through sand and you have to like travel. Through. So Abzu is by the same creators of this game. And I've played it on like three different platforms now. I have it on PC, I have it on PlayStation 4, and I have it for the Switch. I am in love with this game. So as soon as you said Ab uh, Abzu, I'm like, oh, I know that game, babe. I know that game very, very well. 
And I just, I love, because you can play that game through and just spend your entire time, like hours in the first level, just looking, because if you if zoom in, it'll show you each individual fish and like the name of the fish and like where it can be. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm going to freaking learn about fish. Like, I love this game so much. <laughs> so I have found my people, my Abzu Zen people. I'm, I'm completely appreciative. So, um... Your your uh a, your human job is a swim instructor, which ties in with your uh, mermaiding lifestyle, and I wanted to ask you how your interactions have been with the mer community, either online or like on TikTok or in an app, or how how so like have you found, you know, your little group, or are you just kind of observing right now, or like what's what's happening, what's happening with your online presence? Yeah, so at the moment, I am kind of in like a purgatory sort of, of phase um, where I just finished like observing and lurking a little bit through the community, um, and I'm actually posting things now. Um, I am still a hobbyist. Uh, I'm hoping to go pro very, very soon. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very, very new to the community within the past few months, I would say. Um, but I do have experience prior to that with the community a little bit. So um, when I first started my job at a swim school like five years ago, it's not the same place that I'm employed now, um, we had lap swim. And there was a merman that would come to lap swim regularly, like twice a week or something like that. Um, and I was captivated by this dude. And he would show up and he would like live stream his swims. He had the whole outfit. He had like, I think he had a silicone tail. He, he was the real deal. Um, and I was too awkward to ask him any questions, but I would watch him every single week. Um, just kind of a, a little bit jealous and, and a little bit just kind of wishing that that could be my, uh, my job. And then I promptly forgot about it for a couple years. And then when the pandemic hit, I, uh, needed an outlet and I was I kind of remembered this dude and I'm like oh well maybe I could try this and I've been I had been seeing people on TikTok uh, around the same time you know being mermaids and and going professional with mermaiding and I thought it was incredible um, and I think just one day at like 2 a.m it was kind of an impulse buy but I, I turned to my partner and I was like hey how would you feel if I bought a mermaid tail and he's like I, I don't care and i'm like okay then i'm buying a mermaid tail we're getting a mermaid tail um and i bought a fin fun like right then at like 2 a.m um so that has been just a brief summary of my experience um other other than that i'm very new to the community um i'm still kind of getting my feelers out there and trying to figure out you know where i fit in and all of this <laughs> well because there's there's several different like you know factions in in the mermaid community online right there's like the fashion side of it there's like the lifestyle side of it and like the active activism um there's the sport right the loving of the sport then there's like the modeling side of it and things photography um crafting like there's there's a bunch of creative different fishes right all over the world so unfortunately for my brain you know, they make you feel like you can just do everything that they do, even though they've been doing it for, you know, 15 years. You're like, oh, like, for example, right, like I have um, you and I are crown twins, as you know, but like I have another one here. You see someone create this and you're like, oh, I can do that, too. I can I can make that. And you go and you put together like pipe cleaners and like glue shit to it. And it's not good. Like, it's just not good. You know what I mean? It's not good. And you're like, OK, um, maybe I won't. I, I won't do that. I'm just going to put that down now and just appreciate what other people can do because that's, to me, it's terrible. I have no discipline. Sorry, I'm laughing because I have a failed circlet, like, a yard from me right now. <laughs> oh, can you show me? Come on, show me. Come on, oh, okay, show me. Okay, okay. Let, let me go get it. <laughs> yes, go get it and show me. Oh, my God. I want to see this. Oh, gosh. They can't just say that and then feel like they're safe for not showing me. They have to show me. There's there's this guy. It's not that it's so bad, cute. but it's what not. Do you mean? <laughs> it's so cute. What do you mean? <laughs> so Here, guys, here's my failed I mean, piece of usually art. Usually I would put it like under my curls like this, but yeah. it 
it looks all right. It's not very it's symmetrical. I took it to the beach one time. It looks cool, but I'm, I kind of look at what other people have made and I'm like, mm, you know, <laughs> see, you're like me, you're like me. I'm like, I get so proud of my little garbage and then I look at, I'm like, oh, wow. oh, <laughs> this isn't good. I think that's so cute and adorable. And the fact that it's not symmetrical adds to the organicness of it, right? It's organic. It's a, it could be a living thing. Yeah, Ooh. that's true. <laughs> Just, oh yeah, man, you and I me, like man, we're two mermaid pods, two mermaid peas in a pod. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, you know, I get, I get all creative and I'm like, I'm going to create something. I'm like, I'm going to make like a crowd or something. And I do this. And then I look and then I'm like, oh boy, I've spent way more money on hot glue than I ever. I'm like, people don't use hot glue. It's just, it's awful. It's, <laughs> it's awful. And then I end up with beads and glitter everywhere. And it's just not, it's, do you need, we need to stop. It just needs to stop. I need to stop <laughs> myself. <laughs> this can't happen anymore. So, um, but you are going to be uh, redesigning the clasp on your little uh, shoulder piece that you said was originally a belt and that you'd like to change the clasp on that? Yep. So right now, um, I this is macrame, but the edging of it is crochet. So the, yes. the back of it, I can turn it around for you, but the back of it is just a little like corset lacing. It's like super loose right now because I had to turn it from a belt into a sash. Um, oh, okay. But um, I'm hoping to like close it a little bit more in a pretty way so that it doesn't just look nice from the front. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I completely understand what you're saying there because when I'm getting together on, t uh, getting ready for TikToks and I'm like, oh, that looks nice. And then I try, I'm like, oh no, don't. Just don't turn your head. You'll be fine. Just do the entire video like this and you'll be great. If you turn your head, you're like, oh no, look at the, oh, that's not good. That's okay. It looks great here. <laughs> I completely understand. So tell me a little bit about um, your, uh, because I always ask other people how their partners are in regards to supporting their mermaiding journeys. Um, because I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting to have that person observe you from the perspective of someone who loves you and cares about you and how mermaiding um, has changed you, whether in like confidence. So how does your partner like feel about it? Has he expressed how he feels about it? Is he supportive of it? Does he say anything? Um, so I think he thinks it's interesting, but it's not something that he wants to like participate in, if that makes any mm. sense. Um, so he, he's happy that I have an outlet at the moment. Um, I struggled through the entire pandemic because I did not have an outlet, you know, socially or artistically. And they're just, I didn't feel like I had a place. Um, and so, you know, he's happy that I'm, you know, I'm online and I'm interacting with people and I'm making things and I'm doing things that make me happy. Um, I don't think he gets it, but you know, that's fine. <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Cause like, well, that is he like, you know, here, hold the camera for me. Is he like, babe, pick me up, put me on that rock. Will he do things like that? Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, I think he's, he's pretty clear that like, uh, you know, this is my hobby and you know, there are certain situations where he's like, okay, I can take this picture for you, but like, you should hire a photographer. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. I should hire a photographer. Um, but he, he does what he can. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, no, my, my mom, my mom is in here just telling me that my husband is the same. Yeah. Josh is no merman. I know my husband's not a merman. I don't, I don't think I would appreciate it if he became a merman. He needs to be my mer handler. Who's going to pick me up? I need a pickup. I'm like, hello, human, human struggling, struggling fish, pick me up, pick up. And so like, that's, that's, that's what I use him for. Now we went, um, my husband and I last year went to one of our, uh, Ontario Great Lakes. It's so clear. Lake Huron for like a little mini vacation, um, just to get away to go camping. Cause again, pandemic couldn't do very much. So we went outside and camped and, um, you know, he followed me around with the, with my, uh, underwater camera and I'm a, a self-taught swimmer as well, but I'm a very, very strong swimmer. And I was so worried about him the whole time. I'm in a mermaid tail and I'm just doing my thing. And I thought my human's gonna die. Like, what is he doing over there? Like, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. Oh, oh. I'm like, are you like, you need to go back to shore, sir. Like, I'm concerned. <laughs> like, it was, it was terrible. So, 
Um, I've told him that, you know, he's not allowed to do that anymore. I've like banned him from following me around with the camera. Uh, but yeah, no, we have, we have uh, pretty supportive uh, partners and they're supportive. I think they're supportive because they see it makes you happy. Right. Right. It makes you happy and it makes you feel like a confident fishy. And so what, what are they going to say? No, like go back to being miserable. <laughs> if, if he does, well, Meru, me and you, we can go and make glass beads in my garage together <laughs> using YouTube tutorials. <laughs> and like, hopefully the firemen won't get called or maybe they will. I don't know. But, <laughs> but oh my gosh, no, you need an outlet, babe. You need an outlet. And um, you need to feel, uh, you know, safe and secure. And it's strange because water does that for me. Does water do that for you? Does it give you that like safe and secure feeling like physically? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we call it the baby burrito. Like you feel like, you know, like when you swaddle an infant and like we call it the, ba you feel like a baby burrito in the water. Oh yeah. So I, I actually have EDS, which means my joints like to come out of place all the time. Um, and the water is like the only place where I can prevent that from happening. Um, and it's awesome because there's kind of like this immediate like feedback, like, uh, there's a little bit more resistance when you're in the water. So you are less likely to hyperextend your joints. Like I'm prone to doing. So, uh, it feels amazing just being in the water and, and not subluxing all my joints. Yeah. So, um, I, I can't remember what this there's like, you know, that phobia that people have of like open water or like water underneath them. I can't, I don't remember the name of it, but I'm sure you've maybe heard of it when people. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That one, that big, long, lovely word that you just said. Um, I don't, I don't have that like at all. I feel quite comforted in water. The only thing that kind of gives me the heebie jeebies a little bit is when you're in a really dark lake and you can't see like the water's dirty and like, you can't see that kind of gives me a heebie jeebies. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Maybe, maybe because I'm just thinking of pollution. I don't. I don't know. But I'm like, eh, eh I don't want to swim in this. I don't. I don't like. Do not like. Do not want. No, thank you. Well, even just not being able to see where you're going is pretty unnerving sometimes. Because I was swimming in the ocean, but I was very, very close to shore like a few weeks ago, and there's so much sand when you're swimming close to shore, and I couldn't see anything. And I wasn't really concerned about the cleanliness of the water because it's just sand. But, you know, I don't like that I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> Have you ever bumped into anybody while, you, while you've been swimming? No. Like upon, no? No. no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and because I swim, because all mermaids, you got to swim with your hands out, right? So you don't bang anything. And unfortunately, my hands might have gone into places where they should not go when you meet a person for the first time. You know, this is not, these are not places that you would normally grab a stranger if you are, you know, normal, normal in the head. This is not somewhere. So this was a very unfortunate accident. And luckily the gentleman had a sense of humor about it, but I was mortified. I was like, ah, my God! like I was freaking out. I was like, ah, like this, I was, it was just, it was not okay. It was not okay. And and my husband is laughing at me at shore. He's like, what have you done? And I'm like, I've touched something. And he went and it. And it went and touch it. And it went and touch it. It was awful. Thank God it wasn't my face. Nero, can you imagine if I didn't have my hands out? You know what? We're just going to move on. We're not going to talk about this story anymore. It's triggering. I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. Thank God I had my hands out in front of me. Oh man. Oh no, it was bad. This was not, he was, he was like, hey, hey, no, 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 sir. You misunderstand completely. Um, I'm sorry. And this shan't happen again. And it just kind of like, and now you're in a mermaid tail, so you can't get up and walk away. You have to, you know, putter yourself back. In the... I wanted to die. This happened to me as a swim instructor, not as a mermaid, just a swim instructor. Oh, like... Oh, when you've like assisted someone and accidentally put your hands somewhere where you re really shouldn't? Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes like they freak out and you just have to push them back to where they need to be and whatever gets pushed gets pushed because they're freaking yeah. out. So you don't want them to inhale water. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's an experience that I've had to deal with before. Um, and usually people are pretty good about it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, as long as they're not, you know, like, eh, trying to get your number afterward, I think that that's good. As long as they understand, no, no, my friend, this is a life-saving, life-saving maneuver. Like, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, my life, I can't. So, um, I've also had, you know, incidences at the beach where someone's uh, dog has come and grabbed a hold of the bottom of my tail and kind of like this. And I'm like, okay, listen, like, you know, cute. But maybe not. Let go. Let 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 it, let it. And you can't, I because the bottom of the tail is so heavy. I can't like tug on it. So it's it was just a pathetic situation. Like if you'd have seen it from afar, it. I don't. I don't think you would have been standing. You probably would have been crouched over laughing, because uh, it was quite <laughs> bad. And this person was like, you know, their dog. I can't remember what their dog's name was. A human name it was like Roger or something. They're like Roger, drop it, Roger, let it go. <laughs> So um, there are some human, you know, mishaps when we go mermaiding in public, but, um, you know, they make for good TikTok stories. So I'm not too mad about it. Traumatized, but not mad. <laughs> I just don't want my, my friend Karina says it's relatable. She, uh, she did swim instruction with me. So she's, she's saying that uh, people get pushed wherever they need to get pushed most of the time. <laughs> oh, thank. Well, yeah, like when you're, well, um, I'm sure because you're a swim instructor, uh, you have your CPR training, like first aid CPR training as well. Right. And um, well, you know, if you have to perform uh, chest compressions on a female, right? Maybe if, if sometimes uh, when you have to do the um, AED and, and uh, a woman is wearing a bra with an underwire, guess what? You got to cut it off. Like, right. So things are, it's just, it's, it's wonderful. First date, it's very invasive. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if saving my life involves exposing me to the world, you know, do it. So. <laughs> oh, hon oh, hon. Yeah. I've had two children in hospital. So I completely, I'm like, yeah, yeah here we are. We're here. <laughs> Everyone come on in, come on in bring your, bring your friend. Bring your uncle, bring the guy selling ice cream. Come on in. We're going to get this kid out and everything's going to be fine. <laughs> I completely hear you and understand you. Um, so actually, I had a question for you because I'm about to take like recertification, like not my recertification, but I'm about to go back to CPR first data for the first time in like 10 years. I haven't taken it in 10 years. Um, when you're doing the AED on someone and that person's wet, so this is specifically to deal with um, water accidents. Can you still perform the AED on the person if they're wet or the ground is wet? And do you have to back away from them? Like, does the like does the electricity travel through the water? Is that stupid? So I stupid? I've heard mixed things about this. Um, from what I know, the general consensus is don't waste time drying them off. Um, mm. It's not going to matter that much. Um, I have also heard other things but the general consensus that i've heard is don't waste your time drying them off because those seconds are important okay what what about if the ground is wet underneath the person and you're kneeling in the wet are you also going to get a like is that going to travel through the person and into you is this stupid i feel dumb I'm you know? unclear <laughs> about no you're you're fine i actually don't like, know the answer to that Okay, well, Which I'm going to find out. Should, to be completely honest. <laughs> I'm going to find out. July 10th is my course. And I'm going to ask. I'm going to be like, excuse me? Person teaching? Um, mermaid here. Yeah, question. If the person is wet and the ground is wet and you're kneeling in the wet and you go to shock them with an AED, are you going to get shock limited too? Should you stand up out of the wet? Or do you not have to stand up out of the wet? And let them look at me like I have three heads and go, you're stupid. And you don't pass. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll let you know because I'm really curious about this to know, especially when you're doing water rescue and you drag that person up onto the side of the pool deck and the pool deck is wet and we have an AUD that initiates shock. Hmm. Karina says she knows. Um, she paid more oh, attention Karina, tell in me. the same CPR class than I did. I um, so Karina me. says that uh, it gives you... <laughs> We were in this, uh, we probably took the same class online, but we took the class at the same time. Um, but she basically is saying that uh, don't waste time drying them off. The AD will give you a warning and just back up away from the water. Yep. 
back up away from the okay so there is a potential for so move away from the because i know you don't want to be touching the person or anything so water is a ha i knew it i knew it we're not we're not as dumb of a fish as we think we are <laughs> does that make i don't know i don't know does that make any sense so thank you karina thank you thank you for telling me because i don't know anything and i can't wait to impress the people in my class ha <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to embarrass myself, aren't I? I'm about to like literally, it's fine. I'm used to it. So um, there there are some issues on my end, um, Siren Meru, in regards to like buffering and stuff. So I'm not sure if it's like my connection or like our connection in general, but like we, it's okay. So uh, I feel bad cutting this short on you because like I had a few more questions for you. Maybe we can do this again. If you want to agree to do this again with me when like, we have a different connection or a better connection, we can like ask more questions and like go a little bit longer. But I really, really am appreciative of you coming in to talk to me in my own little crazy, you know, uh, universe that I've created for myself. And um, for allowing us to understand you a little bit better and your experience with, um, you know, your disability and how uh, water has played a, healing role in your life and and i know that that can be very sensitive for people to keep that close so i wanted to say thank you for sharing that with us and sharing that experience because i can guarantee you you're not alone you're not by yourself thank you so much uh and thank you for inviting me i was really really excited to hear from you <laughs> oh stop my god me me my little me and my little canadian fish self uh yeah, We're, I'm just collecting all the mermaids. Every time I see a mermaid on TikTok, I'm like, mine, 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 <laughs> mine, 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 mine. I'm not a mermaid. I'm one of the seagulls in Finding Nemo. I, 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 that's what I am. I'm just, I fooled everybody into thinking I'm a fish, but I'm actually a very annoying seagull. Well, I'm grateful to have been adopted by you. <laughs> Yay! Mine, 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 mine. Thank you so much for your time, my darling. And we will absolutely do this again if you would like to. If you'd like to come in and talk to me again. Absolutely. Yeah, just let and, me know. Yeah, they, I'm going to say goodbye to chat and goodbye to everyone on your side who I can't see because I can't see your chat. So bye bye, Siren Mayru's chat. And goodbye, my chat. And thanks for coming in and joining us. Bye, Siren Mayru. Thanks for joining me tonight. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye to chat as well. Have a good night.